All right, now we're going to take a look at energy within a system. And there's two main kinds of energy within a system. This will be an introduction to those two kinds of energy. First, we have kinetic. Kinetic energy is the energy an object has due to motion. An object gains this energy when work is done on it during acceleration. So, whenever an object accelerates, this uh, an object uh, experiences an increase in kinetic energy because kinetic energy is the energy an object has due to motion. That object maintains this energy unless the speed changes. So this is another version of Newton's first law. An object in motion will remain in motion unless a force acts upon it. So the kinetic energy is maintained unless the speed changes. Next, we have potential energy. Potential energy is the energy of an object that it has due to its position. So an object's potential energy is associated with a set of forces acting on an object. So there are two main types of this potential energy, which doesn't have to do with motion. It has to do with an object's position. First off, when you think about it, what is the force that acts on every object in the world? Gravity. Gravity, gravitational potential energy, is uh, the potential energy an object has due to the force of gravity. So an object has gravitational potential energy when it is above the ground. Now, for example, an object, if this is the ground, an object of mass m doesn't have any potential energy if it's resting on the ground. But, right here, if this is the ground, and a mass is up above the ground, a certain height, then that object has potential energy. So in this situation, the potential energy would be zero. In this situation, the potential energy would be greater than zero because the object is above the ground. So gravity has the potential. So the potential basically means if you let go of this object, it'll fall straight down. So that is what it means, that energy has the potential to turn into kinetic energy if you loosen it. The next kind of potential energy is one that we won't see as much, but is still very important, is called elastic potential energy, which is also known, really this is how you'll most of the time think about it, this is known as spring potential energy. So an object has elastic potential energy when that object is, when the object is compressed, or stretched. Now compressed, now let's take for example we have a spring in between these two points. Now this spring right here, if you compress it that means I'm gonna bunch it up close to itself, right? Compress it means you push it together. Stretching an object means you take that spring and you stretch it out wider. So you take this original spring and you compress it or you stretch it away. So that is what elastic potential energy because if you stretch it or compress it, as soon as you let go, it's going to want to bounce back to exactly how it was. Now, before before we finish here, let's look at the formulas for these three kinds of energy. We have kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and elastic potential energy. So for kinetic energy, the formula is one-half mass times velocity squared. So if we pick our variables, I know mass is going to be m, velocity is going to be v, so kinetic energy is going to be one-half mv squared, and that's going to be kinetic energy. Next we have gravitational potential energy. So my potential energy 
due to gravity here is going to be m mass times gravity, which is g, times height, which is going to be h. Now this g is always going to be, as you think about it, 9.8 meters per second squared. Right? And then last but not least, we have our elastic potential energy. And this is the one that's going to be a little bit new because we have a spring constant which we've never seen before. The spring constant basically tells us how strong this spring is because the stronger it is, the more potential energy it's going to hold. Right? So the potential energy of the elastic object, right? so the elastic potential energy is going to be one half. The spring constant, we're going to pick the variable k. And for the distance here, that means the distance the object is stretched or compressed, right? So rather than using d, which we usually think of as talking about how far two objects are away from each other, we're going to pick x, which tells us how far an object is stretched. And don't forget, it's going to be squared. So here's my three formulas. Kinetic energy is one-half mv squared. Potential energy due to gravity is mgh. And potential energy of the elastic object is one-half kx squared.